others with the other. And I'm about to post it again. So here is the information that I wanted to share with you. Um, and it's just too much to write for a third time. It's just way too much to write. So on the post that I'm putting cabin, this is cabin fever and, uh, it's cabin fever, uh, featuring the apostles, the, the 11 elect, cause it was 11 of them. And at the time they had not yet chosen, um, Matthias, which was the 12th one. He took Judith's place. So, um, on that, uh, the actual picture, the picture shows like when you Google Pentecost and the reason that Pentecost came up is because the cabin fever for the apostles, they were told to stay put, to stay in place, to not leave until they received the promise um, that Jesus was going to send back from the Father. And they did not receive that until Pentecost. Well, that um, I started writing about that because Pentecost is getting ready to happen. We are two weeks away from Pentecost. Literally, we are two weeks away from Pentecost. So um, I began to talk about this and talk about the significance of this because of the fact that back in April when I was fussing about Passover and I was again trying to tell everybody that Resurrection Sunday is not Passover. It's not Passover. So anyway, because uh, I think I go into that in the other video. So anyway, on this one post, what I did was I Googled because I wanted to see, you know, well, what is Google saying about Passover? So Google mentioned two things. First of all, it said that the Christians, now I'm a Christian. So first of all, it says that the Christians um, count 40 days from Easter and that's the Passover. Uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I don't have this up on my screen. I don't even want to look at that. I'm kind of upset with that. Uh, let me try this again. I'm about to Google again. What is Passover? So that I can read what it actually said. I mean, what is Pentecost? That was my question. What is Pentecost? Because I can't like see it right now because it's not posted okay so it says what is pentecost where is it okay so this is what it said pentecost is a christian holy day that celebrates the coming of the holy spirit 40 days after easter that part right there but let me go ahead and finish reading what it says. Some Christian denominations consider it the birthday of the Christian church and celebrate it as such. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish holiday held 50 days after Passover. That part is correct. Pentecost is a holiday that is held. They say it's a Jewish holiday. They're saying it's a Jewish holiday, but it's a holiday for all of us believers because God said when he instituted this celebration that it was to be done to time and definite. So that's something like, like all of us talking about going to heaven and, and expecting to go to heaven and be raptured. This is something that we will be celebrating still. It is a, so, um, Pentecost was a Jewish holiday held 50 days after Passover. That part is correct. The part that's incorrect is Pentecost is a Christian holy day that celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit 40 days after Easter. So, number one, Penta, 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 Pentecost is, is 50, is, is 50, not 40. Days. Where they got the 40 days, and this is what I was writing about, where they got the 40 days from has to do with Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, I didn't write that down. I meant to, but I could turn right to it. Like I've been looking at this all day. In Acts chapter 1 is verse number 3. I'm writing it down now. Where it says, 
that it says, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men, talking about Jesus after he was resurrected. He showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Um, so then they asked him, they, they asked him a bunch of questions about that. Um, he let them know it's not for them to know the dates and times and that they're, that when, um, it says, uh, but when you receive power when you, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes in a cloud and a cloud hid him from their sight. Um, so after he said all that, he was, he ascended to heaven. He, he um, went to heaven. And so this was a period of 40 days. So, so 40 days plus the three days that he was in the grave, the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th. That's 43 days. It was on Pentecost. Seven days later, because Pentecost is 50, this was a celebration. It was on this celebration that while they were still cabin fever, while they were, they were still together in this one place, all of them, it was, um, and let me tell you who was there. It was, because uh, uh, it's so, so I was there. Here it is. It was um, those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthias. Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. Um, then Peter stood up, you know, and, and as a matter of fact, it says, and in those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120 in addition to them. And it says that uh, he was talking to them and they decided to that it was necessary to fill that empty slot that Judas left. Judas Iscariot when he committed suicide. And uh, so they prayed to the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. I'm going over this. though. this is Acts chapter one. They prayed to the Lord and they said to the Lord, Lord, you know, everyone's heart. Show us which of these two and the two that they proposed was um, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and they asked Jesus, who do you choose? You know, the hearts. So he said, who do you choose? Um, show us who you have chosen. And the lot fell on Matthias. And so he became the 12th apostle, taking the place of Judas. So um, after that, on the day of Pentecost, they were all together in one place. And then, then they heard this sound. It says the sound um, was like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Um, that happened on Pentecost, which was 50 days from the Passover celebration. So for Christians to believe that um, it says Pentecost is a holy, a Christian holy day that celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit 40 days after Easter. Yeah, nah, that's incorrect. That is not biblical. That statement is not biblical. The second thing that is not biblical is Easter and Passover is not the same thing. If you're reading from the King James Bible, you can see that difference in Acts chapter 12 verses 1 through 4. Um, I'm going to read it from the NIV. Now, the NIV is a thing. You have to do your research and you have to understand these dates because reading it from the, the NIV will be a little confusing because the NIV says Passover as opposed to saying 
um, uh, Easter, which the King James Version says. As a matter of fact, I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you. I'm about to read them both. Um, and so the NIV, this is what the NIV says. I'm going to start. It's uh, four verses. It's Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. It says, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. If you remember, I told you they were holed up. They were afraid. They were afraid because they had already killed Jesus. So they were afraid for their lives. And so this, here it is some days later, they were still afraid. This, I mean, nothing was different. The only thing is when the Holy Spirit came down, it empowered them. And that, that power from the Holy Spirit, you could do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Christ will give you strength and boldness to be able to go out and do his work. So it said it was about this time uh, King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. So James is already dead, brother of John. Um, verse, in verse 3, it says, when he saw that this, also, that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Keep that in mind. He arrested Peter during the Feast of Unleavened Bread with the intent to kill Peter like he already killed James. But this happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, now, now keep that part in mind. It says, after arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. Ding, 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 ding. Something's wrong here. here this, now here, this is the NIV. The NIV is saying Passover. Now, I'm not saying that the NIV is wrong for this reason. Um, Christians today call Easter Resurrection Sunday. All day long, I'm saying these are two different celebrations. Easter and Passover is not the same, but Christians seem to think it's it's the same because they they um they they call it Resurrection Sunday. They try to get over calling it Easter, which is a celebration of Astarte. The, the I think she was the goddess of fertility or something like that. I'm not sure. Astarte. But um, Ishtar and Astarte are the same. Ishtar and Astarte. But um, instead of calling that celebration for what it is, the, the celebration of this pagan goddess, they, they uh, call it they call it Resurrection Sunday. And please don't get offended. Please listen to this. You're going to want to hear this. Don't get offended and, and say, oh, you know, you know, um, she's talking about this holiday, you know, and I know what I'm celebrating. And don't get offended. Please listen to this. Um, uh, because they call it today Resurrection Sunday. And I have proven in the other video, I prove that this is not Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday is not the Passover, the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. It is, or not for real. It is not for real that. So they're calling it in the NIV Passover does not, does not shock me because of how it's called today incorrectly. Um, how do we know that this is not Passover? Because when God instituted the Passover celebration, Passover actually falls on Nisan the 14th. The very next day, which is Nisan the 15th, is the celebration called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So here's the deal. Do you think Herod was going to keep Peter in jail for a whole year? He wasn't putting Peter in jail for a whole year. He wanted to kill Peter. And so what happened was the the um Peter was arrested the day after the true Passover. He was arrested on the 15th of Nisan, which is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But because they were getting ready to celebrate Easter, um uh uh, uh King Herod did not want to kill him before that celebration so he put him in jail to wait now let me prove it to you king james version 
I'm turning to the same scripture, Acts chapter 12. If you have a King James Version, if you don't, Bible Gateway is on your phone. You can look up any translation. Go look up the King James Version and you will see it there. The King James Version. So I got my dates. King James Version with the itty bitty, uh, itty bitty letters. And let's see, chapter 12 I'm trying to find. Let's see, chapter, okay, so chapter 12. So I found it and now I'm about to read it. Now listen to what the King James Version says. As a matter of fact. You see, I'm reading it. It's the itty bitty letters. Okay, it says, Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take to he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. God is specific. He's letting us know when this happened. This was on the feast of unleavened bread or the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So Easter and Passover is two different things. And, and you cannot get to Pentecost without knowing the correct date of Passover. So on here where it says Pentecost is a holy day that uh, is a Christian holy day that celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit 40 days after Easter. 40 days after Easter is not going to get you Pentecost. 40 days after Easter is not going to get you Pentecost. That is not biblical. It is not biblical. It is not supported by God's word when this Pentecost is a celebration of weeks. It's a festival of weeks. There are seven weeks, 49 days plus one is the 50th day. The 50th day is called Pentecost. Um, so now look, I'm going to give you these scriptures and I want to this time what I want to do different with all the times, all the many times that I've talked about this holiday, that I've written about this holiday. What I want to do different this time is I want to explain to you why, what they're, what they're trying to keep from you, what they're trying to hide from you. See, I know this information. I know this information. I learned this information back in... 2004 and God has made sure because let me tell you me I, I would look you I would forget I would forget if my head wasn't attached to my body I would forget my body I would forget my head so um I say that to say this God has always made sure that I did not miss a celebration. Something would happen and he will make sure that my attention is brought back to it. And so with everything that happened today to cause me to come back to this information, see, I wasn't even thinking about that. As a matter of fact, when I wrote, when I first began to write about the, um, uh, about cabin fever, about the apostles, I wasn't even thinking about Pentecost. I totally, it just, Slip my mind. So to have this come up again and to recognize that we're two weeks away from it, I praise God and I thank God and I have no intent to miss this holiday. I'm going to tell you what it is that the world has been trying to keep from you, to keep you from knowing these. There are three festivals that God himself instituted. All the rest of these holidays are man-made. Every single holiday that is celebrated in this world that has been celebrated since I was born into this world. Every single holiday is man made, man made. But in God's word, there is three festivals that God himself 
instituted. Not only did God institute it, Jesus himself celebrated it. He never missed one. Let me tell you about Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. If Jesus, if not, how do I say, if any of these holidays were false holidays, Jesus would not have celebrated it. If they were, if this holiday was a holiday that was not to be celebrated or 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 um, commemorated year in year out, he would not have done it. He's the way, the truth. He's the way, the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So, so, um, going back to this, here's, here's, cause I try, I promise you, I wrote all this stuff down. I promise you I did. I wrote it down. I wrote it down and twice it got taken. So here comes the video, right? So here's the scriptures. Cause I, I'm, I'm, uh, I read to you. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 4, showing you that Easter is actually mentioned in the Bible. And the way it's mentioned, you can see that it is not Passover. It is, it is totally different. Um, I read to you Acts chapter 1, verse 3, where uh, where like that, that post said, said that Christians believe that um, or they count 40 days from Easter it to, to celebrate Pentecost and yeah that's wrong and where and I showed you where they got the 40 from so I'm going to take you now to Exodus chapter 34 verse 22 and again Pentecost is called a festival of weeks it's seven weeks well one week is seven days so it's seven weeks of seven days um and the scripture that I want to show you I'm going to first read to you verse 22. This is Exodus chapter 34, verse 22. It says, celebrate the feast of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Now, the feast of weeks with the first fruit, the feast of weeks is Pentecost. So here he is saying, celebrate that. Celebrate the feast of weeks. Now, um, I see it that there is something, there's a reason why um, this has not been taught and is not being taught in the church. There is a reason why um, this has been held back, withheld, hidden from us. And I'm about to show you what that reason is. Exodus chapter 34 is verse number twenty. 3 and 24 it says three times a year all your men are to appear before the sovereign lord the god of israel three times a year remember i said it's passover pentecost and uh yom kippur which is the day of atonement which is i think it's the festival of ingathering I think it's in gathering. One is the festival of unleavened bread. One is the festival of the weeks. And I think, yeah, I think it's in gathering. Um, but it says, and I could be wrong. I wrote it down. Oh, darn. I wrote it down. I wrote it in. Yeah, they make me sick. They make me sick. They erased all that work I did. Um, three times a year. I'm going to read this again. This is Exodus chapter 34, verse 23 and 24. This is what they're trying to keep from you and trying to keep you from getting. This is the blessing that comes from making all three of those festivals. It says three times a year, all your men are to appear before the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. And listen to what he says. He says, I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your territory and no one will covet your land when you go up three times each year to appear before the Lord your God. He said he will drive out nations before you. He will enlarge your territory and no one will covet your land when you go up three times a year each year to appear before the Lord. 
that is his promise. God said his word that comes forth from his mouth would not return to him void. That is his promise. And how the enemy has been keeping you from getting this blessing is by keeping you from knowing about these three times a year. Passover, Pentecost, and the Day of Atonement. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Verse 10 through 16. This is the last one that I'm going to share. And then I'm going to post this video again. Then I'm, I might just do a laugh. Because now I'm feeling some type of way. Because of the fact that I did all this work. Not once, but twice. And twice it was taken. Even after I saved it. Never should they did that. Never should they did that. So you're going to get this. You're going to get this message. I'm going to make sure that you get this message. People stealing. I get tired of that. People stealing from you. Stealing from you. Your blessings. You're going to get this message. That's why God called me to do it. <laughs> you know, I was going to catch an attitude and make sure you get it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to start at verse 9. It says, count off seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. What that means is seven weeks. That's when you start your count or the count started um, on the day of first fruits. So here's how the day is going. I did it. I showed it in the other video, but I'm about to tell you here now. It was Passover, which was nice and 14. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is nice and 15th. And then on nice and the 16th, which was the day that Jesus resurrected from that day. Day, nice in the 16th, which is uh, the day of first fruits. He said, it says, verse 9, count off seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. Now, the sickle is like a, a, a it's shaped like this. It's a knife. And, and they go and they chop down stuff. And so from the moment you begin to harvest, harvest is when you're getting your, I got a strawberry outside too, by the way. I saw a strawberry outside. So they when they were beginning to harvest, it says from the day, uh, let me put it, say it again, count off seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. Then celebrate the feast of weeks. So you count off seven weeks. These are seven weeks to seven days. Then when it says then celebrate the feast of weeks, this is Pentecost. Then celebrate the feast of weeks to the Lord your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. You, your sons, your daughters, your men servants, maid servants, the Levites in your town, and the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows living among you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and follow carefully these decrees. Verse 13 says, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days after you have gotten at the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the third one. That's the one that I said is the Day of Atonement. It's called Yom Kippur. Um, you might hear Rosh Hashanah. Um, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. It says, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your feast. You, your sons and daughters, your men servants and maid servants, and the Levites and the aliens, the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns for seven days, celebrate the feast to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands and your joy will be complete. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he would choose. At the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's Passover. Um, the Feast of Weeks, that's Pentecost. The Feast of Tabernacles, that is Yom Kippur or Rosh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, the Day of Atonement. It says, no man should appear before the Lord empty and it. each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. 
Bam. Bam. So, he's telling us these are the three feasts. Passover, you've already missed Passover. If you if if you've already missed Passover, you've already missed it. Um, and in celebrating Easter, that's not celebrating Passover. In celebrating Resurrection Sunday, that's not that has nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with Passover and with unleavened bread um, or first fruits, which is the day that Jesus got up. That's what. Uh, you call it Resurrection Sunday, but but yeah, that's not that. It's not that. It's not that.